morning. We are at Joshua Tree National Park. Our 27th National Park. Of our lifetime. Of our not, lifetime. Not of yeah, this not trip. Of this trip. <laughs> and we are on the Barker Dam Trail, which is just a little one mile out and back trail. Uh, it's eight o'clock on the nose. It's about 80 degrees. It's supposed to be, I think, 108 today. So we started early to make two short hikes before the heat gets really bad. We are hoping to see some desert wildlife. They we say that this is the bighorn sheep area. We don't know if the bighorn sheep got the memo or not. <laughs> so far, they have not greeted us at the beginning of the trail. They have not. All we've seen so far is a squirrel. <laughs> As always. <laughs> As always. Um, so, oh, I'm trying to go over a tree here. So uh, here's the view for the start of our hike because it is pretty spectacular. As you can see here, we're hiking into these. There's gonna be petroglyphs on this trail. And of course, Joshua trees. And of course, Joshua trees all over the place. What is a Joshua tree? It's a really big yucca plant, basically. It looks like a Dr. Seuss tree. It does. It looks like it came right out of one of his books. Um, oh, there's another squirrel. <laughs> Squirrels and bunny rabbits. We see a lot of those. Again, hopefully no snakes. <laughs> so uh, here's the trail. So here's what a small Joshua tree looks like. As you can see, it looks kind of like a yucca except only spikier. And uh, we'll show you a full grown one here in a moment. So as the Joshua trees get more mature, the leaves die off and kind of turn into like a fur on the trunk of the tree. And then eventually they fall away and reveal bark underneath. What's interesting is that this isn't a tree. It doesn't have growth rings and uh, it's just a really, really big plant but it does actually have what looks like bark on it. They get to be about 40 feet tall. This one I'm standing under is probably about 20 feet tall. And they estimate that they can get to be about 150 years old for the really big ones. Fascinating the difference in the desert as we travel. Here, there are no Soero cactus at all, but uh, lots and lots of Joshua trees and other things. So we just came across a sign uh, on this trail saying that they've turned the loop into a one-way trail to assist in social distancing. Normally you could choose to go right or left around the loop. Well, and they also had a sign that said pull off to the side of the trail if you encounter another hiker which we've seen a lot of, but it's the first time oh, we've seen a, a big sign. Lizard. Mm -hmm. so Sorry. And lizards and first, so this is the first time we've seen a sign about um, social distancing from one way hiking uh, in the national parks. So we're at the Barker Dam area and the water is no surprise, mostly dried up. What's fascinating is on the rocks around us, you can see the water line where this water could be up to maybe 12 feet deep or more. Different time of year, different environment. Well, I never expected to see ducks in the desert, but there's three of them swimming around in the last little bit of water left here. I don't know if you can hear that sound. It's bees, dozens and dozens of bees. So I think it's time to back up. So we're now here at the top of the Barker Dam. And uh, this is a man-made dam. It was built in the early 1900s by some cattle ranchers. Yeah. We didn't have that much of a drought. There's some in there, but not much. So on the Barker Dam Trail, if you take a little extension, there's a section of petroglyphs. Wow. And these are colorful. really detailed and colorful. Fascinating. Did the sign say how old they are? Um, and then down in this little cave, you can see some more. No. And there you 
got some right here, up close. Bighorn sheep. Yeah, that's the only big. So the one thing we didn't really get on this trail is the Joshua Tree forests, but we are coming around a corner of this rock outcropping, and all of a sudden the valley spread out below us, and you can just see the Joshua trees everywhere. And they. Uh... A rock that looks like you could put your hand in it and lift it up if you were Superman and a book. <laughs> <laughs> Big step. Bigger step. We are kind of wrapping up this hike. We're just over two miles of hiking. Part of that is because we took a wrong turn. We missed the turn in the trail because it was a lesser used trail. So it just wasn't quite as obvious. Um, I really like this park so much. So we're coming back tomorrow and doing a longer hike and starting even earlier so we can beat the heat. But the rock scrambles, the dam, the Joshua trees, so far, this park is amazing. Yeah, this is definitely five stars. My only complaint is that the park service does not have hiking maps available. So there's not really any detailed hiking maps. Uh, if you get the park newspaper, there's a guide in it that has like a general map of the park, but the website and at the visitor center, there was not really a lot of uh, trail maps available. Now at the trailhead, there was uh, a map on a sign. So a pro tip, take a picture of a map. And that's probably a good idea anytime there's a trail map at a trailhead. It certainly doesn't hurt to take the photo, but then like, like Brian does, he maps the hike. So we can see it and it follows the map. So I was able to compare the photo that we took of the map to our actual route on our GPS tracker. And that's how we realized that we had made a wrong turn. We were actually going the wrong direction. We saved ourselves probably about a mile and a half of walking on the road, which would have been fine, but certainly is not nearly as much fun as walking through a sandy wash. Um, I wouldn't call it sandy wash. <laughs> but at least it's not black asphalt um, shining up into our face. <laughs> So we're walking up to Skull Rock by the power of Greystone. And uh, it was formed by water collecting in a couple of crevices and just kept wearing away until it formed basically some eye sockets or what people have thought look like eye sockets and the bridge of a nose. You can kind of see it right there. I can see it. Yeah, it works for me. The closer you get, the less it looks like a skull. Unless you know what you're looking for because someone told you on a sign. <laughs> well, that's certainly true. So thank goodness for interpretive signs. But this area is called Big Rocks. And uh, I can see where that name came from. This is definitely one of those nice pull-offs so you can see something. Yeah, we're literally just 50 yards from the road. Which is fine. All right, I don't know if you can see them, but we just learned about these bugs with the big orange wings. They're called tarantula hawks. It's There's a wasp, two of them over there. and they are one of the most painful stings in the world. So uh, I'm not going to get any closer than this, hopefully. But you can see them in here 
collecting nectar. And lots and lots and lots of honeybees. They're just everywhere. And this bush smells amazing. So I see why they're attracted. We are at the world famous Shields Date Garden because one of the things to do when you're in the Palm Springs area is get your date milkshake. Apparently 95% of all the dates harvested in the United States come from this city and a couple of cities right around here. So uh, let's go get a milkshake. Okay. All things date and dried fruit. We are in Joshua Tree National Park in the Black Rock Canyon section of the park, different from the trail area that we were in yesterday. It took us about an hour drive to get here, including a stop at the Nature Center to pick up a hiking map. Again, I don't know why the park system doesn't make these maps available online. Uh, there was a really nice printed map for this area, and it was the first time I'd ever seen it. So it had uh, trail descriptions on it and a map of the trails. I'll show it here. And um, we're on the West End Loop, which is a four and a half to five mile trail. Should take anywhere from one and a half hours. Hi, Michelle. Morning. One and a half to four hours, depending on your pace, according to... No, two and a half to four hours. Two and a half to four hours, yeah. depending on your pace, according to the description. It's going to climb about 800 feet of elevation. Let's see, we left the campground at 6.30. It took us about 45 minutes to get to the nature center. Then about 15 minutes to get the map, figure out where the trailhead was on the map, and Which, drive to the trailhead. We drove, but we could have done it from the campground, right? We could have walked from the campground, we found out later. So, um... It's hot today. It is warm today. So it was uh, 77 hot. degrees when we left the campground. And that was just a little more than an hour ago now. So it's about 7.45. We've been hiking for about 10 minutes already. And uh, we'll see what this adventure is going to bring us today on the trail. we got some wildlife. Some two deer. Uh, crossed over, over, the over the ridge. So I lost them. But while we're taping... So we're walking here into this little valley in Black Rock Canyon. Quite a few Joshua trees in this area. We've seen the black-tailed jackrabbits. There's those two deer again. Let's see. They're playing peekaboo over that bush. I think I got a good photo. Not that we haven't there seen deer goes. before. That's Our first good. real mammal wildlife encounter <laughs> here in this park outside of squirrels. This trail has been really, really well marked. Every time we've come up to an intersection, there have been signs 
showing what trails we're at. And the trails are easy to identify. Yeah, these trails are very easy to follow. I mean, it's pretty obvious that that's a trail and that that's a trail and that that is not a trail. So you can really see very easily how to follow now, the trails. They're not all this wide. No, it's been a little narrow in a couple of spots. We're single file. In a, near the park boundary, so we think it could be a boundary road. The views are amazing. And we have not come across any people. No people we at all We have so people far. in the parking lot, but it's real quiet out here. thing when you do feel like you see a trail shoot off you're pretty clear about marking don't go this way instead we're gonna go this way all right we just made quite a climb this trail has been pretty flat for the most part we had a gradual rise and then at the last intersection we were turning into this dead-end canyon so we knew we were about to start climbing but that wash down below is the trail we just came from. It's steep. So we just climbed from there in probably a quarter mile. And we are not quite to the top yet. Michelle, I'd like to tell you that you made it to the top of this mountain, but I don't think we have quite yet because, well, everything around us is bigger. The only way out I see is to go all the way back down or to keep going higher. Higher is what's going to give us the view. We started climbing at about mile 1.8, and right now we're at mile 2.4. Oh, we're at the halfway point. So, about the halfway point of the total trail. And I think once we get to the top of this, it'll all be downhill to get back to the car. <laughs> He's so just jinxed it. It's not going to be all downhill, but that's why we hike. It is absolutely beautiful here, though. We enjoy the views. We enjoy the experience, but I don't enjoy every single minute of every hike. The only noise I hear of the outside world is that airplane. Which I can't see. All right, I would always rather climb uphill than climb downhill. We got to a very steep section downhill, um, so much so that Michelle actually sat down to scooch down the trail because it was that steep of a downhill. And we're on this kind of sandy surface, which is actually very slick because the sand just kind of slides out from under you when you step. So, uh, ooh came down to this little runoff in the valley and now we're about to climb back up again. I don't mind climbing hills when it's for a view and the views here are spectacular. So the trail is taking us right past the Black Rock Canyon campground and there is trail access between campsites 20 and 21. So we are walking this loop trail, we are walking this loop trail in counterclockwise fashion. Um, going clockwise, you would end up with some really steep climbing up and then a lot of pretty steep climbing back down. Going counterclockwise, the way we went, we ended up with a little bit more gradual climb down, and then that steep climb, and then the super steep, I'm gonna sit down, come off 
to climbing. So I don't know which way is better. Either way, the elevation is going to be the same. But I feel like if you go counterclockwise, you end up with the steepest parts as your climb instead of your descent. So depending on which you think is more difficult to climb or descend. But I think from the uh, parking lot, I like doing the climb sooner in my hike, where if I were at the campground, I'd be just starting and the climbs would be at the end. And climbs at the end can be tiring. I don't know. Six months I have to do. Either way, start early. Because there's very little shade anywhere on this trail. So again, I know we've said it before, plenty of water, start early. Thank you.